Станка радиостанции Советского Союза. Lawrence Wiener, W E I N E L. To me, it's very exciting to me. But wood in the end is wood. And I began to realize that if I could determine sculpture by the use of language, it would allow itself to move from culture to culture. And the work has no metaphor. And in having no metaphor, it leaves it open for people to use the work to make a metaphor to suit their needs and their desires. It seemed to me an amenable way of placing my work in the world. You try, and if it's not for you, you don't do it. And if it is for you, you do it. But you can't say they forced you. Nobody forces anybody to be an artist. It's the one reason that we're all sitting here and talking. It's the one thing. I came to my mother, who I didn't have the best relationships with, but, and I said, I'm going to be an artist. I must have been about 16, because I was leaving high school, going into college. It was different times and different place. And it was all public, uh, not public, that's different here, state. <laughs> and I said, I think I'm going to be an artist. And my mother looked at me and said something, and we really didn't have a lot of communication. And she said, Lawrence, you're going to break your heart. Okay. Why? Art is for rich people. You've also spoken well of the art world, not in terms of being able to actually absorb ideas and open up possibilities. But that's what it's for. But it's, 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 it is for that. But it's gotten better in the time that you've been in it around? Obviously not. I survived. <laughs> no, I mean that seriously. I survived. I even had the privilege of raising a child. I'm having the privilege of having a grandchild, making what I make. Therefore, it's, it, it can't be that bad. Better than the world at large? I mean, in terms of... Uh, um, the art world is... It used to be better than the world at large until the, the Academy took over. Oh, I thought you said the market, but the Academy... No, the Academy, the market. There's nothing wrong with the market. Oh, so the way they talk about you can, it? You can, you can ignore the market. The market is just what it is. So because of the way the Academy's talked about it? or No, set what up they've done. I mean... Britain has just forced the entire world, the United States, Canada, all of Europe, into a Lisbon Accord.
you. Why don't you... You're stuck with me. Why don't you just throw me in the water then? Okay, I will. <laughs> Kiki, and you have to rechange your whole mentality to get back in the car and be able to drive out on the street. Art is something that's looking for a place and banging against the walls, and that's what you think in terms of shaking things up. Light and darkness. He who ordained, when first the world began. Time, that was not before creation's hour. Divided it, and gave the sun's high power. To roll the one, the moon the other span. Thence fate and changeful chance and fortune's ban. Did in one moment down on mortals shower. To me they portioned darkness for a dower. Dark hath my lot been since I was a man. Myself am ever mine own counterfeit. And as deep night grows still more dim and dun. So still of more misdoing must I rue. Meanwhile this solace to my soul is sweet. That my black night doth make more clear the sun. Which at yon rebirth was gyrant to wait on you. The piece doesn't have to be built, it can be presented in language, or it can be built by somebody else because the words are all well-meaning. Uh, they choose to leave it in language because, again, it allows that mixture from one generation to another to another, where the meanings of things very often change, but the things themselves don't. So in the end, they have an inherent form and an inherent meaning. Language allows for that inherency to, to remain. That's the whole purpose of art. It doesn't answer anybody's question. It gives them the means to answer their particular question at that moment. You are responsible. You knew what you were going to do. When you pointed the gun and you pulled the trigger, you knew it was going to kill somebody. It didn't happen by accident. The art is about simultaneous realities, and those realities are not a reflection of each other. Reflections of things have a tendency to become hierarchy. One is the real and the other is the copy. Uh, it's like Freudian dreams. Uh, they don't mean anything. A boy is a girl, a cat is a dog. You wake up every morning and your job as an artist is to try to pay attention to where you are at the moment. I still have the uh, miscomprehension or misunderstanding that I have something to say. So I convince myself and fool myself every morning that what I'm going to be doing is going to have something to say to somebody. They always bring us together, expecting the artist to tell people how to do. That the reason I'm an artist is I don't know how to do anything. <sighs>
laid out what they've done. But it don't work that way. How does it work? You are in the stream of life with you. You are in the stream of life with you. You are in the stream of life with you. Like it or not. And if you're going to be in the stream of life, then uh, you have to accept the responsibilities. I would like a few more of the pleasures, but uh, there doesn't seem to be time. Like it or not. And if you're going to be in the stream of life, then uh, you have to accept the responsibilities. I would like a few more of the pleasures, but uh, there doesn't seem to be time. Do you trust your culture in their hands? The people who wandered off when a school was closed down, they just continued their, their, their career track. And Maybe that's why I'm so interested in designers, is to set up a pattern for people to understand where they are, and from that they can determine what it is they want to do, and they can figure out how to do it. I see it the way, uh, as notes on a scale. In the old days, one tried to find a typeface that was not authoritarian. It was still elegant, mm -hmm. and I prefer sans serifs. Uh, and everybody was using Helvetica, and it's one of the typefaces that I have. I, I literally could go off and be a play person. I, I'd love to do that. But you've got to put it in some way. So you clean it up, you translate it, and I'm using language and gesture. Remember, the majority of the people we know think that everything is in a straight line. The majority of the world. And then you've got to figure out what the hell you're going to do next. Or why. Why is the question, not what. What is a matter of skill? We all develop skills, but why is the question? 
And can I go just jump a sure, little bit jump, jump. out of this thing of please, me? Please, please jump. Thanks. Hmm. Because, uh, you know, I just did a book for Mumok, you know, the traveling, uh, the, uh, the big bus and things, about where in the world could this be beautiful? Because they asked me, I'd done something about value, how much is enough and all of that, and then they asked for one about beauty. Hmm. The problem is, it's the most horrible word in the world. It's a disgusting word. It's probably a word that's destroyed more people's lives and dreams than anything else. Is your mother good? Yes, my mother was good. Most people are lucky. Their parents are quite nice. Is your mother good? Yes. Is your mother beautiful? Yes. Now, what happens to the other enormous amount of people whose mother doesn't look like your mother? Well, that's what we've had in art. We've had this breakdown because of the necessity of a commercial system. Economic uh, consequence, I've avoided it, but that's my own choice. A teacher is a very dedicated, really involved human being. Uh, the only trouble is, in order to do their job correctly, they have to assume authority. Mm. As an artist, I chose a long time ago to try to not have to assume authority. I really prefer, and I grew up in a really heavy political background, in a very heavy physical background. I try to avoid imposition and try to use presentation. So do you mean You want to make somebody or? do something, make it look attractive. <laughs> it's yeah. a hell of a lot better than threatening to beat the shit out of them. That's good white art, that's good black art, that's good red you art. You don't want to recognize it. I don't want to recognize it. I want, to, I want somebody to show me something that I haven't seen before. Do I dare ask, is there something of late you've seen that had that effect? I can't do that. No. Uh, I have a problem. I, I was just doing an interview recently that was sort of a big deal. And uh, what artists influenced you when you were young? You're always going to forget somebody. <laughs> so it's better to just say, you know, the things that somebody else did, I looked at it, made me want to be an artist. You know, you, you mentioned Mondrian, and then you, you've forgotten Manet, then you mentioned this one, you've forgotten that one. You mentioned Pollock, you've forgotten Chamberlain. Yeah. By the time you're all finished, it, it's not a point. It, we're, we're not running. This isn't about pop stars. <laughs> I mean, I make t-shirts with things on them, but it ain't about t-shirts either. Um, one thing I noticed about, in terms of, um, if I dare say, younger artists, I'll be careful, I'll be, I won't be too I, bad. Look, I, I had my first mean. show when I was 18 years old. <laughs> I, I've, told, I've said this to you before, you should know better. I know. And, I and, you know, and I started to show things at odd times. And so-called, the world used to be a little different. Uh, artists who were more prominent and had nothing to do with anything else, I was just a kid were not frightened by what I was doing. Mm. Some of them were perplexed, and I do remember one comment, which is the classic, and, you can, and it really was said by two or three very, very substantial people at the time. Hey, kid, everybody says you're crazy. You're not crazy, but I don't know really quite what the fuck you're doing, but how the fuck are you going to make a living? <laughs> now, that's the kind of response one is supposed to have. Being young, being old, uh, all of a sudden having one life and then changing it and making art should have nothing to do with what we are looking at. It has nothing to do with the problems your parents had to survive, and it has very little to do. I'm sorry if I'm sounding so boom, 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 but I, I think this is a very, very decisive time in everybody's life. There's going to be another kind of a war, a culture war that's making no sense whatsoever. All it's doing is killing an awful lot of people. But it's time for us to stand still and realize what is it all we trying to deal with. Okay. I remember getting up on a stage at uh, an Art Basel, I don't know what, oh yeah, they were showing a film of mine, so I had to say yes. And uh, I got up and it was Jorge Pardo, who's an artist whose work, nothing to do with mine, but yet it is in the same direction, mm. genuinely. He comes from a loving, nice parents, working class background, went to work when he was quite young. I come from the same kind of thing. My parents were quite nice to me. I, you know, they were not the problem. It was all the people out on the street that were the problem. And uh, both of us looked at this audience who was looking for significance and said, 
We didn't learn a goddamn thing from it. It didn't change anything. <laughs> you ended up doing what you're doing because you figured out what it was you wanted to do. It had very little to do with the fact that you were poor or you weren't poor or you were privileged or you weren't privileged. It has nothing to do with it. Art is one of the few things that when it hits the table, and I think we're in agreement on this, mm. it's what it is. All the anecdotes, all the stories, they're here, and they grabbed and smashed them up against the wall, hitting photographs, and said, let the fuck... Uh, I've even used works of mine in songs that I've worked with musicians, where it's presented within the body of the song. Uh, it becomes recognizable that it's sculptural. Uh, if somebody uses it in their, in their thing, uh, I guess it's the way it's supposed to be. I think we make art that it should enter the culture. You begin to get angry if somebody is exploiting it or something and you get nothing. Who was looking for boys and you, know, you were pretty and you were standing there, you stood there and you went. <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, the generosity of, of, of people towards what you call younger people is one of the great astounding continuing wonders of the Western world. <laughs> Presenting meaning that hasn't yet found a context. And I, I feel like I'm repeating myself too much, but we think of art as something you put out there and it floats. And it has no place to be. Nobody asks for it. Nobody knows what to do with it and in banging against everything to try to find a place, it's functioning as art. After a while, it sort of finds a place, it gets used, it comes down, and it's just on the table, uh, very much like uh, those are the accomplishments of human beings. It's, all goes out of the way. But when you're talking about the, not the what, but the why, it, it, I mean, at a certain position in the art world, you're given endless whys. People are constantly saying, do this, and would you do this, and giving you reasons. Yeah, and you sometimes are totally attracted. There it is. But art is at that wonderful moment, that's the highest form of art, when it doesn't fit anywhere. It doesn't really, it functions, it got in the door. You got into the club, but then they're looking at the way you're dancing and it doesn't fit. But you got through the gate, because that's the job of an artist, is to get through the gate and get past the bouncer. finish his turn. Well, I finished my turn and I afterwards realized there were all these men in, in, in gray canvas kilts that had been playing rugby all day and if it had gone the wrong way, I wouldn't be sitting here. of the light from above, brought to bear on the froth of the waves on the sea. It's basically a sculpture. The work itself came about in conversations with Christian about organ. It's about the materials that I'm choosing to use. Now, you can't make a painting without getting the, the surface canvas, paper, whatever, buying the paint, mixing it. The same with the sculpture. You can't build a sculpture until you decide what the materials you're trying to build something to tell something with. I chose the materials that were it at Arkin. And those were waves and light. One of the things is you're standing, there's water, which is, which is a material, and light has weight. And art is really all about the appreciation of materials and human beings. And it's an appreciation, it's, it's to give dignity to a material. I get interested in the materials. And it's the phenomenon of the interaction of the materials that interests me. I don't have an idea to begin with. But what is the purpose of sculpture? Have you an idea?
Sculpture is a marking of materials that help human beings find their own place in the sun. And the quest, as you call it, I didn't think of it as a quest, but what I'm trying to do when I make a sculpture is place something in the world where nobody has to know anything except that, and they can use it to determine their relationship to the materials at hand. That's the quest. I don't want to fuck up somebody's day on their way to work. I want to fuck up their whole life. And the way you do that is to place things in public that when people look at it, they can use it as a reference point to understand really what their dreams and their aspirations are with some knowledge. That if they can use it, it would enrich their daily life. And that's all that art is. And it's not for the millenniums. It's not forever. It's for right now because I'm only from right now. Here we are. If I were ever to make a piece in a place like this, uh, it would be whatever work I was capable of making. But it would have this little thing running next to it that said, see part of it, Lisa, comprena magni, which means this only applies if the small can be compared to majesty. Because in fact, art is one of the few things left that does not exist in a hierarchy. Or I wouldn't oh, be sitting here in the same form that I have. Thing. But it went all right. That doesn't have a genus. There's no way to even judge it except by its use. And I find that that piece, just by chance, at Arkin, down and up, has a use. I hope. And if it doesn't, well, it's one of those works of art that people don't like. What can I do? <laughs> Democracy is all about entitlement. And uh, maybe I'm an old line uh, American socialist. I, I do believe that every single person is entitled to a roof over their head and an education and health care and some dignity. But that's about it. That's about all we can ask from the society. But when you're standing in front of a palace, and you can't make it so personal because there's somebody there who might be the nicest person in the whole world and mean the best. But if there's a little girl in Yuland that wants to be a scientist and wants to be the most famous person in the world, they'll never be as good as that other person, even if they find a cure for cancer, even if they make the best art. And as long as that exists in our world, that there are people as nice as they are, as decent as they are, that think that they are better than everybody else. You can't have what they used to call democracy. Democracy is entitlement on the same level of every single human being. And if what I do has some use for them, it's there, it's, it's given. And by chance, I make work that it's very simple to present it to people. It's maybe not simple to understand. But nothing is simple to understand. I still have trouble with my cell phone. <laughs>